Topic 3.1 is on the chain rule, and it is extremely important. Um, the chain rule comes up over and over and over again. So before we um, learn the chain rule, let's see what you guys think about this um, statement that is it true or false that the derivative of the quantity 3x minus 4 squared is equal to 2 times the quantity 3 minus 4. 3x minus 4. Just decide if you think that's true or false. This is like they use the power rule, which makes sense. Okay, so let's type it in the calculator and see. So we're going to evaluate the derivative of the function whenever x is 2 in the calculator. All right, so we'll do alpha window number 3. So be sure not to use their parentheses, so uh, you would put parentheses inside of theirs. All right, and then we are going to evaluate it when x is 2. All right, so we get 12 using the calculator. That is accurate for sure. So here we're going to get 12. All right, for the other, we're going to try to see if that is equal to this. So I'm going to go into plug 2 into x and what we're trying to decide if it's true or false. So that's going to be 6 minus 4, which is 2, and the 2 times 2 is 4. All right. So how do they compare? They're different. Okay. So then we want to figure out what accounts for the difference. So how are they different? We have 12 and we have 4. So there's different things we could do to 12 to get 4. One thing we could do um, is subtract 8. Well, there's no relevance of 8 in this problem. Another thing we could do is uh, 4 times 3 is 12. Is there a relevance of 3 in this problem? There is. The accounts for the difference in the two values is the derivative. of the inside, All right? So that's what we have to do. We're still gonna do the power rule, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So, so far when we've used the power rule, um, it's always just that what is being squared or what's being cubed is always just been x. Um, same thing for the natural log and same thing for the sine and cosine. It's just been sine or cosine of x, the natural log of x. So now it's, that's going to be an expression. And when it's an expression, we have to multiply by the derivative of that expression. So that takes us to the chain rule. So d dx of a composite function. So you have a function inside of a function. We're still going to find the derivative of the outside function and leave the inside alone. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay, so we're going to do several examples. Um, and then uh, hopefully it'll, you'll, you'll feel good. But we'll, we are going to keep practice in chain rule because it is super important. All right, so this is a composite function. We have a function raised to the third power. So when we find its derivative, we'll take care of the outside. So the outside is the cubed part. All right, so we'll do the power rule. So 3 times the inside, just like it looks, and then take 1 away. And then we are going to have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. All right, so I'm just going to leave that like it looks. All right, and then the derivative of the inside will do the power rule, and we'll get 6x. And then we'll clean it up a little bit. Um, I can't distribute inside my parentheses because they have a power of 2, but I can multiply 3 by 6x. Okay. 
right? That's my derivative. That's the derivative of f of x. All right. That's the chain rule. Let's look at the next one. So before I do this one, I am going to rewrite it. So instead of the square root of 4x plus 5, I'm going to write that with a power. So that power would be 1 half. Okay, so now I'm going to use the chain rule to find the derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function. The outside of the function is something raised to the 1 half. So when I have that, it's 1 half times that something and then take one away from the power, so to the negative one half. And then we're gonna multiply that by the derivative of that something, so the derivative of the inside. Okay, so let's, let's rewrite this. So um, that, um, well, the one half, one's on top, two's on the bottom, but then four X plus five to the negative one half gets bumped to the bottom also, four X plus five to the positive one half. And then we're gonna multiply that by the derivative of four X plus five, which is just four. All right, so that four, it's like four over one. So it's multiplied the four on the top, the one on the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and cross reduce. 2 will go into 4 2 times. So it's 2 over. And then that's the square root of 4x plus 5. Alright. Let's look at the next one. Alright. So we have y equals e to the 3x squared minus 7x. So when I have the derivative of e to the something... It's just e to that something. But because that something is not just x, I do have to take multiply it by the derivative of that something. Sorry, that's y prime. All right. So I still have e to that something. All right. And then the derivative of 3x squared minus 7 is 6x, sorry, 3x squared minus 7x is 6x minus 7. All right, and I'm, I'm going to leave it like that. There's really nothing we could do. We could change the order, um, but I don't think it's necessary. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay. So we don't need to rewrite it. So we really only rewrite it, the function, if it has a square root or it has um, like something in the denominator. We would want to write it with a negative exponent. Uh, so this we don't have to rewrite. So if you guys remember, if we're taking the derivative of the natural log of something, it's 1 over that something. But because it's not just x, we do have to multiply by the derivative of that something. Okay. So the derivative of that is going to just be 6x. Right. And then the simplest way we could write that is just 6x over 3x squared plus 2. Okay, now these are the most difficult ones because we have a function inside of a function inside of a function. And when um, I see these with the, like, the cosine to a power, I always rewrite it because it just gets confusing. So the cosine of 4x is being raised, that whole thing is being raised to the 6th. So I would always rewrite it like that. Make sure it's double parentheses. You don't rewrite it with 4x to the 6th. It's the whole cosine of 4x to the 6th. 
All right, so here we go. Function inside of a function inside of a function. So the outside, the most outside part is right, the something raised to the sixth. So when we have something raised to the sixth, it's six times that something raised to the fifth. That's what the derivative is. All right, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of that something. That something in this case is the cosine of 4x. All right, so I'm going to leave that first part alone. And then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the cosine of 4x. So when we have the derivative of the cosine of something, it's going to be equal to the negative sign of that something. Now that something is not just x, so I have to multiply by the derivative of that. Okay, here we go again. So we're going to bring down all these things. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of 4x. And the derivative of 4x is just 4. All right, so we're ready for our answer. So we're going to multiply the coefficients uh, together. So 6 times negative 1 times 4. The 4x is an angle. It's trapped inside that sine and cosine. We can't multiply it by something. So 6 times negative 1 times 4 is negative 24. All right, and then we have the cosine. Now let's go ahead and move it back to the inside, like, or back to on the cosine, like normally it's written. Now if you leave it out on the outside, that's fine. And then sine of 4x. But on like a multiple choice test, it would be written on the cosine. Okay, I don't think, I can't think of one that gets more detailed than that. I don't think, I can't think of a time when you would have like four functions um, that you're dealing with, but um, that one's got a lot, but it's kind of fun. All right, let's look at this multiple choice question. Now, this is what I was talking about, about rewriting it, um, because this, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the quotient rule because the top doesn't have an x. So I would just rewrite this as negative 7 times the quantity 2x minus 3 quantity to the negative third. That's me. Now the quotient rule will work. It will just be a lot more difficult. All right. So you guys try this one on your own. So pause the video, try it on your own, and then check it with me. All right, so my most outside function is raising something to the negative 3. So I'm going to multiply by that negative 3 and get 21. And then take that something and subtract 1 from the 3, and that's negative 4. And then because that something wasn't just x, I need to multiply by the derivative of it. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. So that's 21, and then we'll stick that in the denominator and make it to the positive fourth. All right, and then the derivative of 2x minus 3 is just 2. And then that 2 is going to get multiplied on the numerator. And that looks like C. All right, so we're going to stop there for the day, and I'll give you all your assignment. We'll pick back up with example three um, on the next day we have class. So page 136, 9 through 11, 43, 45, 55. 
And then we have multiple pages here, sorry. On page 325, I want you to do 41 and 44. And then on page 352, I want you to do 34, 36, and 38. So because the way our book is written, uh, we have to skip around um, to get all the different types of functions here.